We are live. The meeting of the Committee of the Whole Operations is now called to order. I would like to ask, ask you to rise as you are able for the reading of the invocation. As we come together today, we recognize the great responsibilities laid upon us. Our council will always strive to understand the needs of the people we serve and, the, and to use power wisely and well. Our purpose is to establish and maintain a city of prosperity and righteousness where freedom prevails and where justice rules. Let us also not forget those who served our community and who are no longer with us so that we can continue to do the work we must in their memory. Ms. Clerk, has the roll been taken? Yes, it has. Okay, members of the committee, are there any declarations of, of pecuniary interest for items appealing on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, at this time, I will ask members of the committee what items they would like to separate for discussion purposes. Council Scully? Uh, 6.1.2, please. Seeing nothing else. <clears throat> Councilor Samuel, can you please move the motion to approve all items for consideration and consent, not separated for discussion purposes? Moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Van Tilburg that all items contained with in consideration and consent 6.1, 6.2, not separated for discussion purposes, be approved. I will now call the vote on all items not separated for discussion purposes. Thank you. The items not separated for discussion purposes carried on a recorded vote of 10 to 0. All those voting in favor are Councillors Van Tilburg, Samwell, Hunt, Carpenter, Martin, Celeste, Caputo, Sullivan, Sicoli, and Mayor Davis. All those items that were subject to the vote are item 6.1.1, fire routes on private property, item 6.1.3, Brantford Airport Board Report, and item 6.2, the minutes. I would ask the clerk to please read the titles of all items that are subject to the vote for the proceed. You just did. So, <laughs> Councilor Sless, can you please read the motion, motion to place all separate items for consideration not previously yes, voted on the floor? So moved, Mr. Chair. Seconded by the Mayor. Okay, we will now take up separate items in order they appear on the agenda. It is 6.1.2. Councilor Ciccoli. Uh, that's me. Thank you. Um, this this excited me when I saw it. Uh, these two areas are a huge point of contention for individuals trying to commute in and out of West Branch. So I was really happy to see us make some progress. Um, I do have a few questions and I'm assuming it's for Indy or Mark. Yeah, whoever wants to take it. Um, when can we expect this work to be be done? When would it be completed? What is the timeline that we're looking at? <clears throat> uh, Mark Jacklin, Director of Operational Services. So I'm going to assume you're looking at the Brant Ave uh, work and... Um, both Brant Ave and then Clarence, Clarence from Duluzi to Colburn. Right. So the, it, the answer to that through the chair mm -hmm. is it depends. Uh, so the, the situation is we're trying to get design done this year, and then we'll be working it into the capital budgets going forward. Uh, the one on Brant Ave would hopefully be done through the downtown revitalization. Uh, so obviously we would like to get it done as soon as possible, but I just can't confirm a date for you. Okay. Are there any items that we're looking at here in the report that could be done maybe sooner than that? Things like um, one of the items in here is, um, adjusting the pedestrian crosswalk on, across Brant Ave to increase the flow of individuals turning left onto Brant um, so that we can get them over to the, the jug handle to Colburn. Like, is that something that could be done sooner? Uh, through the chair, the issue would, the idea is to get the project all done at the same time in order for efficiencies. Uh, so there is a lot of work that goes into this project. So if you're going to dig the road up once, we want to get it done properly at the first time. Okay. 
And I'm going to assume we're not going to do both of these projects at the same time, right? That would be. To the chair, uh, probably not. One, the project on Clarence is a little bit more complicated than the one on Brent just because of the rail tracks. Um, so our, our plan is to design <laughs> this year so that we're um, kind of working with the timing of the downtown revitalization now. If, Preferably this would go first um, in the whole update of what's happening. Um, but that phasing has to be worked in as the downtown design carries on, uh, which is underway right now as well. So um, okay. just to, in terms of, uh, just to add to Mark's point about um, updating the intersection in pieces, it's really not good for traffic safety either. If you're moving people and vehicles get used to that movement, then they're asked to move and change um, so it's better to design the intersection as a whole so everybody is kind of learning the new movement that's now there um, okay. and uh, as well as pedestrians. So, and we are looking at moving pedestrian crossing and eliminating one area of that. So uh, there's a lot that needs to go into this and there's going to be time for everybody to adjust. Okay. Um, my next question is regarding the armories right on the other side of Brina from that intersection. I've been getting a few complaints about individuals who are just tired of waiting in line and they're instead hanging a right onto Brant Ave, whipping into the armories and then whipping out, um, doing a, a, a right hand to try to beat the traffic. Has there any, has anything been thought of? I know that's private property. It might be more challenging, but perhaps a right hand or, you know, controlling the traffic coming out of the armories. So through the chair. So, the idea is that the dual left will actually help that move. And the reason that's probably happening and Dave can confirm is that yeah. there's a big queue. Yeah. And so in order to get past the queue, you want to do these C turns. Um, yeah. So the idea here is the dual left onto dual rights to the bridge is actually going to mitigate that, but we'll definitely keep our eye on it if there's anything else we can do. I hope so. Maybe we can do this work and then keep an eye on whether or not that's happening still. Um, are there any cost efficiencies that we can find but because we're, um, we've are we moved up um, the environmental assessment for the Veteran Memorial Bridge? And this is kind of like right in that same area. It all sort of connect into one into another. Have we looked at finding any efficiencies in doing both of those projects or, or research pieces at the same time? Through the chair, there, I would say they're completely different okay. stages. This is just going straight into design. Okay. That's got to go through a whole EA process. Now the province is looking at the EA processes right now uh, and they're being reviewed. So what that looks like in a couple of months, we'll see. Um, but they're there, I don't think there's any efficiencies with the type of work that's going in for the VMP versus this going to design and, and, basically could go out to tender uh, by the end of the year, if, if possible. Okay. I would just encourage whoever is doing the design part to take into account what the Veteran Memorial Bridge will look like so that we can make sure that it's intuitive. We're not Frankensteining two major projects together and, and then it doesn't really make sense down the road. So um, I'll just plant that seed with the uh, appropriate individuals. Um, Dr. Ciccoli, your, your time is up. Oh, would you like to come back again? Let yes, yes, that. I would. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, by way of background for the viewers to understand what we're talking about. So this uh, initiative began at the end of the last council. Once we got beyond COVID, the last council established one of its priorities, uh, that being improvements to be made to our road system to uh, smooth out traffic flow and various pinch points in our community. And it, this council, to its credit, in our first priority setting session, uh, we listed this as one of our top five priorities. And so we asked uh, staff to bring to us some short-term solutions. When I say short-term, things that can be done within the next two to four years. And then also to present to us uh, a report analyzing uh, what the longer-term solutions uh, are to some of the more pressing traffic problems in our community. And so to my view, we've got three pressing problems. I call them pinch points. One is clearly Clarence Street and uh, Deleuze. And then of course the other is at the other end of Deleuze at Bran Ave and the turn onto to Lauren Bridge. And then we have of course Bran Ave itself. And this particular solution is the short term solution that we're dealing with. When I say short term, I mean question of several years. 
And that'll be a, a double turn if you're coming uh, west on Dulhousie, double turn onto Clarence. And then there's something similar at the other end of Dulhousie on Bran Ave. Uh, the report tells us that that should improve substantially on a temporary basis, short-term basis. The traffic movement in those areas, which would also be important to help facilitate the flow of traffic to Bulldog Games. So I want to thank staff very much for doing this. The sooner you can do this, the better. Hopefully you can focus. I think you're right that Clarence Street is uh, the greater priority. Then we have the bigger problem of moving traffic from the Shellard Lane West Brown area into our Northwest, which is where all the growth is going to be occurring in the next 20 years, 20,000 jobs. And the choke point is unquestionably Brant Ave in its entirety. Um, and we can see that, right? Certainly the Ward 2 councillors, the rest of us are getting more and more concerns expressed about Brant Ave and the traffic movement on Brant Ave. And we do have a report coming to us before our summer break that will look at what some of the longer term solutions are for that particular issue. Look forward to seeing that. But I wanna thank staff very much for this particular report. I think it, uh, it's a common sense solution to dealing with those two pinch points. And certainly I hope will be done before the end of this term of council, at least it be, have begun, so that the residents of the city can see that we are taking action to improve traffic flow in our city. And uh, I can live up to billboard commitments given five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Council Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would building the connection from Oak Park to Colburn not be a better way to address the congestion at both these locations? Through the chair, sorry for the delay, uh, to Councillor Martin. I think we have two different, both of them have to work together. So Brant's has its capacity and Oak Park would have its capacity. And so right now we're trying to find enough lanes for the capacity on Brant, but as the mayor mentioned, that will run out. Um, so there's, it's not one or the other, it, they have to both work as a network is, is probably the easiest way I can say it. Okay. Um, and, uh, on page 11 of the report, uh, section 9.3, one of the first bullet points, implementation to lead pedestrian intervals to improve pedestrian safety uh, increases uh, the all red operation by three to five seconds. Whose idea is it that it's a good idea to put pedestrians in the intersection ahead of vehicles when someone running a red light is gonna be more likely to stop if there's a truck pulling out in front of them than a pedestrian walking out in front of them. Uh, through the chair, Dave Ferguson, manager of traffic services. Uh, so there have been a number of uh, industry studies done on, we call them LPIs um, and the safety. Uh, there, there, there has been, uh, or they have seen uh, increase in safety for pedestrians up to uh, 60%. So that it is a significant safety improvement that is used in the industry. That surprised me. I thought it'd be a, a reduction in safety for pedestrians. Okay, thank you. Councilor Samuel. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was really pleased to see this coming forward tonight as well. Um, the intersection specifically, the Clarence one is uh, a big concern in uh, Ward 5 as well, and all the congestion that uh, is through the downtown. Um, something I did want to ask, though, is it did, on this report, it also talked about the roundabout. And I was wondering if you could tell me when that would be uh, constructed and what kind of education there will be for citizens about how to use the roundabout. Thank sure. you. Through the chair, Jen's going to join us. Uh, it's under design right now. Uh, we are looking at the capital budget as well for that project. So we, you might see a need for an increase to that budget. Um, in regards to timing and education, I'll, let, I'll leave it to Jen. Good evening, Jennifer Elliott, Director of Engineering Services. Through the chair to you, Councillor Samwell. Um, yes, the roundabout at Colburn and Dalhousie is in design currently. 
Um, we're working through the extents of that design just because we need to do the underground infrastructure as well at the same time, because we're not going to be digging it up again once we put it in. Um, we're looking to finish design this year for the roundabout, get those um, revised costings, get that into next year's budget, and then we can um, do the construction in 2025. I need to remember what year we're in. Sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for this report. And Jennifer, I'll just follow up on that. Uh, uh, I hope that the media takes it, pays attention to the concept, conceptual plan here for the roundabout at Deleuze and Coburn. Uh, and for those Bradfordians that are, are, are have been in Bradford for a while, that's the access to the old Canadian Tire site where both Coburn and Deleuze Street split. And uh, that's a, I, I like the design. I'm glad to see it. We've been waiting for a roundabout in Bradford for some time. And this, uh, and the right size is very important, and I see that you've done that here. You have a number of uh, Class E environmental assessments to Northwest Municipal Service Expansion. Could you tell me where that is? Through the chair to you, Councillor Carpenter. The Northwest um, Servicing EA, that is, there will be a report coming to Council in, in the next month to two months on that. Um, we are at a point where we're ready to file our Schedule B portions of the EA, which is in a layman's term, it's our northwest, or sorry, our north-south servicing from um, within that project. So that would be crossing underneath the 403. And then we're going to continue into our Schedule C portion of the EA, which is essentially the east-west portion. And the Powerline Road transportation capacity, is that for all of Powerline Road in the new boundary lands area that we're looking for capacity? Correct, Councillor Carpenter. The Powerline Road Transportation EA, that's from where the Northwest Servicing EA ends off, or right around Paris Road and Powerline, and it continues all the way down Powerline Road till to the eastern um, city limits. Okay, and the uh, the the, par the Wayne Gretzky Parkway North Extension, that's Wayne Gretzky Parkway past Powerline Road and out to uh, Park Road North. Correct, that's from Powerline Road towards the north, and it chicanes back into Park Road North. And since all of the uh, Park Road North is in the city boundary. We'll be looking at that time renaming the rest of Park Road North Wayne Gretzky Parkway so that it's the same road all the way to the end. Yeah, we can definitely look at that from be the nice EA. To see Wayne Gretzky be a Parkway T intersection at Highway 99. Mm -hmm. This would be quite the coincidence. Uh, Paris Road to Golf Road transportation capacity. Can you tell me what that is? So that EA is out for tender currently right now. Um, so that is Paris Road from um, just south of the 403 up towards um, Gulf Road, Paris Road, um, as well as our servicing and expansion of Gulf Road. And the Veterans Memorial Parkway widening, that's scheduled for this year, 2024. That's the widening from Mount Pleasant to um, Market. Correct, Councillor Carpenter. With the budgets, the, the multi-year budget, we pushed forward the Veterans Memorial Parkway. So that's for that EA to begin. That will be closer to the end of 2024 where that will initiate. And finally, the Wayne Gretzky Parkway widening in 2025, that's to widen it from three lanes to six, or six lanes, sorry, from four lanes to six lanes. Correct. Thank you for a, a, a terrific report. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Solomon. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to staff. Um, you mentioned all the inner networking, like the multi faucets in order to make flow better as per our transportation master plan. When we were going through the report, one of the other higher options on that report was a Shellers Lane extension to Rust Acres Road. Have we made any headway on that at all? Have we talked to the county? Have we done anything? To the chair, uh, to Councillor Sullivan, we'll be bringing a report next month, May, on, on the bigger discussion of our road network. So we weren't prepared for that today, but you'll see that report in the May cycle and um, you'll definitely see an evaluation of that alternative. Okay, thank you. Okay, going to second time speakers, Councillor Sicoli. Thank you. And I won't be redundant. I think um, Mayor Davis did a pretty good idea of uh, providing an overview on this, but this is huge for West Barrant residents. Um, these are two points that I know I've been stuck in traffic in these areas um, frustratingly for a very long time. So um, I love the suggestions that are in here. I see some suggestions. 
Um, Councillor Sullivan and I have spoke with staff uh, many times about how we can improve the flow of traffic. So um, I'm really happy with um, what's been brought forward. This is not a perfect solution, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, we're looking at our transportation for the sake of the viewers at home in uh, two stages. So we have um, operationally, how can we improve the flow of traffic as it stands? And this is what this report is bringing forward. And then we're gonna have a talk about the bigger projects, it sounds, in May. So um, this is not a perfect solution. It's a step in the right direction. I can already tell that this is going to improve my life personally. So I'm really happy about that. Um, I was happy to see that some validation at how bad it actually is right now. Um, these intersections are rated as, a, well, the one at Brant Ave is rated as an F, which is the worst rating that you could possibly have for traffic. Um, and we're going to be able, with, through these improvements, to improve that to the point where we're sitting at a, a B, which if you're like me in high school is pretty good. So um, I'm happy with that. It's going to dramatically improve the life of all of the residents in West Brant. And we're still here. We're still listening to you. And I thank you so much for the work that's gone into this. And I look forward to these projects happening, just not all at the same time. Thank you. Councillor Sluss. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, just to clarify, uh, th there's three projects here that we're identifying. The, the one at the old Canadian Tire where Coburn and, and Deleuze kind of do their thing there, and we're putting a roundabout there. Then there's adjustments to uh, Clarence Street at, at Deleuze Street. And then there's adjustments at Brant Ave and Coburn Street, correct? Through the chair, so the first one, the roundabout's already approved. It was in the budget. We've already started the design. It's funded. We're just showing the good news story that we're working to manage traffic in that area. Um, the other two are the ones we're asking for design funding today. So those are the two that are a decision of council today. Okay. So so in our multi-year budgeting, we don't account for these two projects. That's right. We okay. were we were studying the traffic throughout when the budget was due. Uh, so it's difficult to just put an earmark with the pressures on the budget. Uh, so we're going to look at what projects are in 25 to try to make space for these projects when we've completed the design and we know how much it's actually going to cost. So we're, we're just, uh, that's why you didn't see an earmark or a placement in, in the 25 budget. So is the object to um, create another funding stream or is it to rearrange projects in their priorities? The chair, if, if Room allows, we'll keep the budget at is, as is, sorry, and we'll add these two in knowing what, when we know the price. If there's too many pressures on it, the reserves are tight, uh, Joelle's going <laughs> to come at me, I'm going to have to see what I can do to, to massage some of the budget to, to get this in. So the goal is to get this moving. It's very important. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. If I could add to uh, Commissioner Hahn's response as well, just to add on, it was a good response, but I just want to, we also throughout the year, you have to understand Commissioner Hahn's and Public Works budgets at full full capital. Then throughout the year, we apply for a lot of grants and it also then, so then it helps out for next year's budget and the multi-year budget as well. So I'm sure um, this, the team has got some grants as well with help out for that in next year's budget. Councilor Van Tilburg. Well, I must say I'm uh, I got word that uh, these changes were coming and I'm I'm pretty happy to see that. Uh Deleuze Street's an easy street to get on, but at rush hour time it's not the easiest one to get off of. The uh I, I got some concerns though uh with regards to the Deleuze Clarence Street. Um in the past I've been told that 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 it's a very difficult intersection to do that double lane turn on. We also know it's one of the most uh, accident prone intersections and it was also the intersection that was supposed to get the red light cameras, but uh, because of this, the design layout of that area, it didn't seem uh, possible. So my question to you is, when we do these things, is the intent also not just traffic flow, but analyzing those numbers of accidents? I'd, I'd hate to see us double up and then double up on our accidents too so is that taken into effect and is there is are they going to look at the possibilities of doing what was planned originally with regards to the red light camera 
through the chair to the counselor. So we've actually did a safety audit. We hired a consultant and they completed the safety audit on that intersection. They provided a number of recommendations that we have uh, implemented the majority uh, with. So uh, we are monitoring it currently. Uh, we do believe that or what we have seen so far since the changes have been implemented is we have seen a, a slight reduction in collisions and improvement in pedestrian movements. That was a, a major concern that was identified in the report. So that that is all taken into account when we are looking at redesigning an intersection and how we can improve operations and safety. Thank you. Mayor Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to stop. So it's a really very comprehensive report. It, it talks about not only those three particular projects that we've discussed at some length, but it also talks about the improvements we're making to our transit system, improving our, our bike path and pedestrian paths. It's all part of an interconnected uh, transportation network. But also there there is traffic control operations. And I found it interesting that uh, we have 150 traffic signals in the city of Brantford and 15 of them have uh, video cameras installed and, and that sends video signal to our traffic control center so they can make adjustments in the system to improve traffic for unforeseen circumstances. And also it uh, relies on this uh, Centrac system to coordinate the traffic lights. And I found it interesting, it says, staff are exploring the capability of the software to utilize smart systems to adjust signal timings in real time based on traffic patterns is that ai Are we, is, is that bringing ai into our traffic control system through the chair that's correct all right and what would the timeline be for that and how advanced is that those additions or incremental improvements to the software we're currently using through the chair <clears throat> excuse me we would be looking at uh probably a need to upgrade upgrade our system uh, our software system to be able to bring that in but uh, there are, are some locations where we might be able to tweak it and have it operating fairly quickly. Right. And I want to commend staff. Many of us don't know, but they, they're continually monitoring the system and improving it. For example, adjusting to the traffic generated by Bulldog Games. There are changes made in the traffic light system for the various routes that take people to the Civic Center. And those changes are made to accommodate the flow of traffic. And so I want to thank staff for doing that kind of your unheralded work behind the scenes and keeping traffic moving as best as possible in our community. Last question I have coming out of this report is the automated speed control system, speed control cameras. It talks about it. What is the current timeline for uh, the implementation, actually seeing the automated speed enforcement system on the ground, in the road, traffic? When can we expect it to happen? Uh, through the chair, so we are just finalizing a, a review through a consultant that we've retained, and we are proposing to have a report in September with recommendations. Any sneak in, preview of what those recommendations might be? Our, our goal is to have it implemented in 2025. Thank you. Seeing nothing else, I'd like to chime in on this if I can. Um, being on those roads every day for the last 13 years of my life, um, I'm welcoming this opportunity for us to do everything we can to try to keep moving traffic. Uh, I do have concerns about Clarence Street, as Councilor Van Tilburg does, because uh, we've had numerous accidents on there, so I hope that we, we get that properly spaced out accordingly. Um, and I am looking forward very much to the report coming on uh, opportunities to move traffic from uh, the Shellers Lane area through to the northern uh, boundary line because uh, that happens and then these points really almost become moot because we're still working off the same uh, arteries that have been moving Brantfordians around for the last when the population was 60,000 to where we are today at 100,000. So I look forward to the new report and great work on this. Councillor Carpenter. This one, uh, now this may seem or fetched, but uh, have we ever looked at removing the parking on Brant Ave? And I know that would be difficult for the businesses on Brant Ave, but have we ever looked at removing the parking and creating parkettes for little, little parking lots every couple of blocks uh, it, through properties in the backyards that we may, city would maintain as city parking lots to move traffic 
quicker along Brand Ave? Through the chair. So the, I believe there, when we um, kind of rephased the traffic signals on Brand Ave, I believe it might have been in 2018. Um, I think there was some work at that time to see what the capacity would be if parking was removed. But uh, I believe staff brought forward just a, a recommendation that we work on the phasing and then we we evaluate what happens with that. And we haven't seen the need to remove tra uh, sorry parking on Brent F. Um, and with this improvement, I think that gets us a little bit more time without removing uh, uh, parking on Brent F. But again, uh, four lanes of traffic, big school there, lots of business. You you do get a lot of speeding uh, yeah. once the roads open up and without the parking. Might like, be something to keep an eye on for future parking yeah. lots in the future so that takes some time to acquire property and so forth. Thank you. And I think if we are doing that, we would have to look at alternate alternatives for parking it out in the back if if possible. That's, that's and what it, I mean. It land permits. That's right. Thank you. Seeing nothing else, can we call the question? Thank you. Item 6.1.2 carried unanim unanimously on a recorded vote of 10 to 0. All those voting in favor are Councillors Van Tiborg, Samuel Hunt, Carpenter, Martin, Slash Caputo, Sullivan, Sequoia, Mayor Davis. We do have a resolution tonight. Uh, Councillor Sullivan would like to add a resolution tonight as there was no prior notice. I would ask the Councillor to move the motion to waive the rules to introduce a resolution without prior notice as well as deem it urgent. And please state your seconder. Thank you, Chair. Uh, obviously moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Carpenter to waive the rules. That's section 15.11.5 and 15.11.6 of Chapter 15 of the City of Brantford Municipal Code be waived to deem the following item urgent in order to be considered outside the budget process without prior notice. And it's 7.1, recognizing the Bulldogs inaugural season in Brantford. And speaking to the urgency is, obviously we all know the season just ended. They're going to be packing up and leaving, so I'd like to address this now before they've left. So. If I could get your support, it'd be great. Any discussion on mo the motion to waive the rules? Seeing none, call the vote. Thank you. The motion to waive the rules carried unanimously on a recorded vote of 10 to 0. All those voting in favor are Councillors Van Tilburg, Samuel Hunt, Carpenter, Martin, Slash Caputo, Sullivan, Sequoli, and Mayor Davis. Yeah, I guess I uh, should have brought Bulldog wear. Councillor Sullivan, please move your motion second, second your, uh, and state your seconder, please. All right, uh, moved by myself, seconded by the mayor, uh, recognizing the Bulldogs inaugural season in Brantford. Whereas the Belleville Bulls were founded in 1996 and relocated and renamed the Hamilton Bulldogs in 2015. And whereas on fe uh, February 7, 2023, the city of Brantford uh, Council appro uh, approved report 2023-58 uh, term sheet for OHL team agreement for the Brantford Civic Center. And whereas staff negotiated a facility lease license agreement with the Bulldogs regarding its use of the Brantford Civic Center, commencing in 2023 for three-year term with additional three one-year renewals. Whereas the, the Hamilton Bulldogs were renamed and rebranded the Brantford Bulldogs in August of 2023, with the team playing its first home game in Brantford on October 7, 2023. And whereas there has been a tremendous positive community sport uh, support to host an OHL team through the sale of nearly 2,400 season memberships for the Brantford Bulldogs and near capacity attendance at games. Whereas the Brantford Bulldogs finished an incredible inaugural season with a record of 37 wins, 20 losses, and nine overtime losses, and finished second in the OHL's East Division. 
Whereas the Corporation of the City of Brantford wishes to recognize and congratulate the Brantford Bulldogs on tremendous inaugural season in Brantford and thank the community for embracing the team wholeheartedly and being the most supportive fans in the OHL, actually the best fans in the OHL. Now, therefore, be a resolve that staff in collaboration with Mayor Davis and Councillor Sullivan be directed to send a letter to the Bulldogs organization and owner, Michael Ann Lawler, congratulating the Bulldogs on a remarkable season and thanking the team for their valuable economic and social impact on the Brantford community, and that the local fans of the Brantford Bulldogs be thanked for their enthusiastic support of the team and for their profound level of community spirit that helped to make the Brantford Bulldogs first season in Brantford such a resou resounding success. Now, may I speak to this? So first and foremost, we all, Jay McKee is the coach of the Brantford Bulldogs, former NHLer. He made a very bold statement the other day. He said he has never heard a louder arena in his life. Now, for somebody from that's had years of experience in the NHL to make that statement, that's on, that's a tribute to the fans. The fans in Brantford are incredible. We heard word from other teams that they hate coming to our city because our fans are so loud. That's a good problem to have. And you know what? The way they embraced every, the teammates, the, everybody walking around, the jersey sales were crazy. Just everything that encompassed the Brantford Bulldogs brought community back to Brantford. Coming out of COVID, I don't think this there could have been anything better that could have formed a, a bond between people. I made friends in that arena that I would not have made otherwise. And I think that was for everybody on this table right now. And I think everybody across the city spoke to people they wouldn't have normally spoke to. So I'd like to thank the fans for that community support, and I'd like to congratulate the Bradford Bulldogs on a tremendous season. Thank you. Mayor Davis. Yeah, first I want to thank uh, Councillor Sullivan for doing this, uh, certainly. I think, Councillor Sullivan, you could, you could uh, earn the accolades as the number one Bulldogs fan. You're certainly been a great fan and great supporter of the team. So um, I'd like to kind of do, go looking back uh, 14 months ago, and take us back, if you don't mind, and recall 14 months ago, that was when the decision was made to uh, accommodate the, the need of the Hamilton Bulldogs to find a home. And remember how the city was just buzzing with excitement when that decision was made. And then remember the intense interest around the community as the, the Civic Center underwent renovations to accommodate uh, the Bulldogs. And then that that frenzy for reserving season tickets were sold out in weeks with virtually no marketing whatsoever. And, but you know, not only did uh, the Bulldogs uh, come to us and bring to us OHL hockey, which to a city that's uh, pretty much hockey centric, that's very, very important. Um, but it also obviously acted as a great stimulus for upgrading what needed very much to be upgraded. And that is of course the civic center. You know, and it brought a renewed energy to, to that area of the city, I think to a, to, a, to a very large degree, it kind of lifted the spirits of the community following uh, COVID and all the divisiveness that came out of COVID. It brought some uh, unity and excitement in our community. It uh, was very much, has been very much a, a unifying effort. It has, certainly there have been some economic benefits. I had a, a lady, asked me uh, at a recent game, she wanted to speak to me. She was from Waterford and she said, Mary Davis, you don't know what happens at the end of the game, say on the weekend. She says, I never come to Brantford to shop, but as I'm leaving the city, I'll go to Sobeys and shop. And I see all these people from Waterford and Simcoe with their Bulldog jerseys. They're in there shopping as well. So there is a unquestionably a spinoff uh, benefit. You know, and it's also, and Councillor Sullivan's referred to this, it's like a weekly gathering point for our community where thousands of people come together who wouldn't otherwise see one another except maybe once or twice a year. Kind of like the old uh, farmer's market was about 100 years ago. That was a, a major focal point, gathering point for our community 100 years ago every Saturday. And this kind of kind of replaces that. There's really nothing else that brings together thousands of people. And of course, you know, bringing people downtown, I had many people comment to me, gee, I haven't been downtown in a long time, and it's great coming downtown. And of course, the, the attention being focused now on the lower downtown, long neglected and much in need of improvement, Bulldogs are acting as a catalyst to that. You know, and, and not only do they bring great hockey and excitement to the community, but also that Bulldogs Foundation, it brings with it, the team has brought with it, a great sense of charitable giving. You know, $145,000 to Brantford Bison's football, almost $50,000 this year to Brant Food for Thought, the school program, the school feed, uh, uh, meal program. Also money to the hospital. 
and also the great program. Uh, I think they call it the uh, Take a Shot program, and that's about 40000 to that. And that's bringing people into hockey, introducing them to hockey who wouldn't otherwise have that opportunity. And so it's been a, it's been a great year. And I want to thank the Bulldogs organization because, you know, when they were thinking of coming here, they were warned. It's a gamble. It's not a very good decision. It's very risky. And unquestionably, I think we knew that here in Bradford. We knew it would be a smart, wise decision. And I think events have proven that to, in fact, be the case. I want to thank the Bulldogs organization, right from Mr. Andalar down, the coaching staff, all the volunteers, all the city staff that helped make this possible, the county construction, the community as a whole coming together and embracing this team. It's been a great experience, and hopefully it's going to continue for many more years. Thank you. And that wasn't yet four minutes. Councillor Samwell. Thank you. And through you, Mr. Chair, first, I want to thank Councillor Sullivan and Mayor Davis for bringing this forward. I would say that it has been an incredible season with the Brantford Bulldogs. Um, I'm so happy to have been part of that and to see that happen. I've seen the pride that it's brought in our city and the pride in the Brantford Bulldogs, the team itself. Um, it's really been a wonderful thing to spend many hockey games with my family uh, at the Civic Center that's now affectionately called the Madhouse on Market Street. Um, I don't know how anybody can sit amongst that crowd and watch the new, info, the new intro, We Are Brantford, and not get goosebumps. It's been incredible, and it's been an incredible season. So congratulations to the Bulldogs. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before the season started, there was a rumor going around that this was going to be a rebuilding year because they lost some good players to the NHL. So don't really expect them to even make the playoffs. Well, they sure shot that rumor down. Uh, they had a wonderful season, finished second. And I think a lot of that is thanks to the seventh player, the, uh, the fans in the stands. The, the excitement in that building is phenomenal. Anybody who's never been to a game, make sure you get to one next year because it's it's phenomenal, the energy and the excitement that's generated by the stands in that building. And I think that's what's pushed the Bulldogs to play hopefully better than than what the rumors are earlier in the season were, were indicating. And uh, it got them up to, to second place. It got them well into the playoffs. And uh, I, I, for one, am, am very proud of uh, of the season they've had. And I look forward to bigger and better things next season. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Carpenter. We shouldn't be surprised, you know. Brantford's home to the greatest hockey player that ever played the game, Wayne Gretzky. Brantford has always been a hockey town. From the from the time the Civic Center was first designed or thought of, Max Sherman was the mayor, and the Labor Council and all the workers donated money out of their paycheck to build that arena. And I'd like to put those, I'd like to have the head of Labor Council, Max Sherman's photos, please put back up in the Civic Center. We did some renovations and their photos have somehow disappeared. I'd like to see them go back up. That was the that was the birthplace of the Civic Center. Civic Center, what it tells us though, well, first of all, I'd like to say I raised, I, I watched game six with Councilor Sullivan and his wife and my wife in the lounge. And that's when I suggested, Councilor Sullivan has to bring the resolution to council because he is without a doubt as the mayor said, the number one fan. Nobody is louder in that arena than Council Sullivan. And I know I talked to him. I said, nobody has more jerseys and, and Bulldogs paraphernalia than you. And then he went, shh, because his wife was there. Who knows how much money he spent? I'm not sure. <laughs> but I know he, he's a proud supporter of the Bulldogs. Uh, in fact, the, the, the fellow that goes around and does all the um, trivia come to Council Sullivan and I and said, Sullivan, he needed a couple of comments from him about what trivia questions to ask uh, on that during that game. It was fun to sit and watch the game there. It's been, I've, I've had season tickets from the very beginning, my wife and I, and I've shared it with my grandchildren and my children when I could, and uh, they've all loved the game. And as was said, it, it is bringing Brantford people together, giving Brantford something to cheer about. Uh, on a time when we had so much loss in our community and for COVID and other issues, uh, and we needed we needed something to cheer about. When the mayor first raised it with me, I said to him, I would support anything that gives Bradford people something to cheer about. That's what we need. Uh, so it's been a terrific season. Uh, but I want to say, maybe the small arena and the loudness of that small arena, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we should think about renovating that arena, pushing out the side, maybe keep and adding a few more seats at the top. Maybe there's other ways to keep that 
large crowd there to make that sound. One thing for sure about Brantford players, Brantford people, they know they were calling the plays and the penalties before the referees are blowing the whistle. They know hockey and they know when the, they know when it's an offside. They know when the goal goal shouldn't count. And they called that out well in advance of everyone else. So, uh, so the season has ended for the Bulldogs and we did put some city money into that. And that's a good thing. And at ne the next season now is springtime. It's baseball time. It's time for the Red Sox. So let's all show the same kind of support for the Red Sox going forward that we showed for the for the Bulldogs. And let's bring Bamford together in front of another team. So happy to have them here. Hope we can keep them here. And I hope they invest. Thank you. Councillor Sloss. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's almost a sad void, I think, in our lives now that the games are over. Um, it, it's You look forward to those couple nights a week at the Civic Center, and uh, you were ready. You, uh, my wife and I used to go there an hour ahead of the game because she loved watching the, the, the warm-ups and, and the excitement that goes on prior to a game. And there's people just pouring in from all directions. And it, uh, it's really a sight to behold for those who haven't seen it or haven't bothered to go down and look. Um, shame on them, because they should. If they can get a ticket, get a ticket and go. They're hard to get, but keep looking and you'll probably find one. I think what it did do, it dispelled the perception, the self-held perception in this city that we were still living in 1980 and that we were under all these depressing things happening, as factories closing, the economy sinking, nothing was going right in the city. And, and we mourned the death of those big industries for many, many years. I think this was the tonic we needed to get out of that doldrum and get back into 2024 where the city is today, not where the city used to be 30, 40 years ago. There's talk about, we don't need a new arena. We need a new arena. The Bulldogs are here temporarily in that building. The building is not OHL. It, it, it's not made for the OHL, not today's OHL. It was built back 50, 50 some years ago and the standard then was okay, but today it's not. The Bulldogs are, are certainly the thin edge of the wedge that gets that building built. But as we've seen, as we toured and looked at arenas in other OHL cities, the entertainment centers are used to bring in major entertainment into the communities. And the Bulldogs allow that to happen because they would be the anchor tenant. There's no question about that. But the city would not have to drive. The people that live here would not have to drive to Hamilton, London, to Kitchener to see things like Cirque du Soleil to see things like Seinfeld, to see things like Elton John, major, major entertainment that will now be available assuming we go forward with a new complex in our city. And I think we are an OHL arena, an OHL city. We've proved that. And now we just need the facilities that go along with being that. So I'm looking forward to uh, next year. Um, we'll certainly have our season tickets. We've already, uh, everybody's renewed, I think now. And uh, again, they're sold out very quickly. Uh, so if you didn't get one, sorry about your luck. Try your luck in, in the ticket exchange or wherever you have to go. Ticketmaster to try and get a season uh, to get a, a single ticket to get in to see a game. I'd encourage everybody to at least experience it once. Then they would know what the rest of us are jabbering about because it's really something to behold. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Councillor Sicoli. Thank you. And apparently some of us didn't get the memo that we were supposed to costume change into our jerseys for this discussion, but um, I'll do better next time, boys. Um, you know, and you, you don't have to be a major hockey fan, dare, I dare say, in the city to really appreciate and enjoy the energy of being in that arena on game night. Um, it's really turned into a major social hour. I, I'm going there. I'm seeing people I haven't seen in a long time. I'm seeing my old high school friends from Hamilton who now have to drive to Brantford um, to catch the Bulldogs. So um, it's, it's really, the community has really come together to rally behind this team. It's such a beautiful energy. It's such a beautiful um, way to bring all Brantfordtonians together to rally behind the Brantford Bulldogs. And we truly do have the best fans here. It's, it's so loud in there. You can't even hear yourself thinking you just really get, um, thrown into the energy of the fans and it's such a beautiful thing so I am so proud to have the Brantford Bulldogs here I know everybody sitting up here really is and I'll just take this opportunity to um, you know wish the players a, a wonderful and safe off season and we can't wait to see you uh, coming back next season okay I'd like to chime in as well it, it really is different going last all the time it's not really fun sitting in this chair 
Um, so um, when we sat here to bring the Bulldogs in, um, I asked Mr. Andalaro if he'd stay longer. I knew what it would take, and definitely we're on the right track for that because the current arena does not meet OHL standards. And you think the Madhouse on Market is loud now, it'd be even louder when you put 5,500 people in there. Um, I said that they would be hoisting a, a championship while they were here. And if you look at the banners that, that are placed at the back of the arena, they do it every four years. So we are definitely on track with that going next year. I'd be surprised if they do not start the season as the number one seed in the OHL. Um, I want to applaud Brad Fordians because we could sit here and say we brought a team in and so forth, but they're the ones that supported this the entire time. They're the ones that were going online trying to find tickets. They were the ones that I see them every day. I, I'm exposed every day in the public and watch people come in with bulldog hats, T-shirts, uh, hoodies. Um, they certainly captured the heart of this city and, and Brantford captured the heart of the Bulldogs. So um, it's, uh, it's great to see that. Uh, from an ownership standpoint, we do have an owner that has a wonderful and great vision as to what he expects by owning a hockey team. It's not someone who's in it and says, here we go, and here's some players and so forth. The investment made not only to create the best possible team, but to create the best experience. And I think that's what we were all talking about here today. Everywhere you go, sometimes you want to be able to have that experience. I mean, nobody goes to Disney and leaves disappointed. So I don't think, other than a loss, everyone who's attended games this year realize how, how wonderful that is and how it's brought the city together. So uh, congratulations to the Bulldogs, but congratulations to Brantford. This was not a mistake by Mr. Andalar. This was a very wise decision to pick moving here. So with that being said, Okay, item 7.1 carried unanimously on a recorded vote of 10 to 0. All those voting in favor are Councillors Van Tilburg, Samuel Hunt, Carpenter, Martin, Celeste Caputo, Sullivan, Sicoli, and Mayor Davis. There is one notice of motion on tonight's agenda. Councilor Sicoli, please read the title of your notice of motion. Yes, thank you. Uh, recognizing Brantford born Phil Hartman. Okay, so please note that the notice of motion deadline for the next committee of the whole planning and administration meeting is this Thursday at 9 a.m. Without anything else, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>